and welcome back to the anime news for the week ending August 4th, 2017. It has been quite the week for anime news, starting with the announcement that Sony Pictures Television has acquired Funimation. Um, this is Sony Pictures Television Networks, which is part of Sony, and they're acquiring a 95% stake in Funimation Entertainment. So it has to go through all the regulatory approvals and other conditions for closing and so forth and so on, but I can't imagine that causing a problem. Uh, Gen Fukunaga, the CEO of Funimation, will stay there, um, and he will still own some shares. This uh, came after a couple of uh, a couple weeks ago, I think, a couple months ago, there was some news that a few companies had been sniffing around and had offered some, uh, some deals to Funimation, and Funimation had refused. And uh, now, apparently, they have not. Sony Pictures Television Networks operates a bunch of things, including Animax in Japan, a satellite anime channel, and Crackle, the streaming service. Um, so there's probably going to be some kind of merger going on there. Um, they have said, basically, that Funimation should continue as it is for the foreseeable future. As we all know, with these things, yeah, it'll change eventually. But for now, Funimation was going to continue as it is. Um... I will be doing a video a little bit while later, kind of explaining some of the, um, some of what Sony owns anime-wise, which will help there, hopefully, to uh, understand all that. But certainly big news. Just no way of knowing what that's actually going to do in the future. Speaking of big news, Netflix made a whole bunch of announcements this week. Uh, it's going to be streaming Canon Busters. Uh, LaShawn Thomas's new anime series. This is a uh, an, an animated series that is being put together by various folks in the um, in the anime industry and kind of outside the anime industry. It was originally kickstarted, and that was able to produce a pilot episode. Uh, to give you an idea of the folks involved, um, not only is LaShawn Thomas directing and serving as executive producer. Um, uh, the writers include Anne Tool of The Witcher, and the animations being done by um, uh, Bahi JD, who worked on Kids on the Slope, Space Dandy, and Ping Pong. Uh, Thomas Romain, who also worked on Space Dandy and co-directed on Oban Star Racers, is the me mechanical designer. So it's an interesting sort of international group of people working on this animated work, and coming soon to Netflix will be 12 episodes long and um, produced by Manga Entertainment, Nada Holdings, and Satellite, the anime studio. So that's pretty darn cool, but Netflix wasn't done. They've announced a CG Saint Seiya remix, also known as Knights of the Zodiac, over here in America. Um, this has been made, there have been a bunch of anime adaptations of this and some manga adaptations and so forth. It'll be a 12 episode CG series. Um, Standard 30 minute long episodes, 12 episode season. Directed by Yoshiharo Ashino, who worked on Tweeny, Eight, Tweeny Witches and Cross Anji, or Ange, or however they pronounce that, and animated at Toy Animation. Um, Netflix, still not done. They've announced they're going to be streaming a new Baki the Grappler anime series. Um, Baki came out quite a while ago, quite popular. Um, uh, fighting manga. Been a few various adaptations of it, and again, a new version coming out and going straight to Netflix. Be 26 episodes, uh, animated by TMS Entertainment, who did Lupin the Third, We Life, and lots of other things. Still not done. Netflix has announced an original sci fi anime coming to the network called AICO Incarnation will be a simultaneous worldwide release in spring of 2018. There's a promotional video uh, airing on Wednesday. It's directed by the guy who directed Gargantia on the Verger's Planet and Film Little Alchemist, Sacred Star of Milos. And it looks um, generally in a similar sort of tone to Gargantia. Um, so it's certainly not lighthearted, but in that sort of more realistic, more structured, more... Um, you know, we've thought through the science of this kind of a, a world set um, at some point in the future. 
very interesting kind of concept. Um, uh, some neat animation. There's a four and a half minute promotional video uh, streaming on YouTube, uh, which I believe is not subbed in English, but you know you get a good feel for it anyway. So that is for A I C O Incarnation coming in again spring of 2018. So that's a while away. That's in like nine months from now. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Twelve episodes, half hours, all that kind of good stuff. So lots of stuff coming from Netflix, which is cool. Also cool and kind of surprising, some news about the um, live action Gintama film, which premiered in Japan a couple of weeks back. Uh, it has now made over two billion yen in earnings. That's in fourteen days. This is the, the fastest live-action Japanese film released this year to get to that number. Not, not the fastest live-action anime adaptation, the fastest live-action Japanese film this year to make that much money that quickly. Anime films generally do not do well. Anime live-action adaptations generally do not do well. But apparently this one has nailed it. It's really impressive. Um, sold three quarters of a million tickets its opening weekend to make uh, $8.7 million in its first four days, which by Japanese um, um, theater standards is very good. And had the highest opening two days of any Japanese live action film in 2017. Total box office earnings are expected to surpass 5 billion yen, which is about $45 million. So they're doing it right between this and the Roni Kenshin live action adaptation over there. It's like, hey, more of this, please. Um, speaking of live action adaptations, interesting news story. The Ghost in the Shell live action film debuted on a DVD and Blu ray, and it came out at number two on the charts. Sold really, really well. Um, the, um, interestingly, the Ultra HD Blu ray sales accounted for 11% of its first week sales, the highest percentage to date for any film that may have earned more than $5 million at theaters. Um, so people really want that in Ultra HD. So that is really cool, doing very well. Um, uh, I, I don't have the numbers right now on how many units it actually pushed. Um, digging into that now. Um, yeah, the, 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 the actual unit numbers are have not been published that I can find. So hopefully we'll find that out someday. But yeah, live action Ghost in the Shell did really, really well on DVD and Blu-ray. So that's cool. Um, anyway, um, let's see here, moving on. Oh, so I mentioned Aroni Kenshin a few moments back. A new Aroni Kenshin manga will be starting September 4th. This has been hinted at, and essentially, well, not just hinted at, they said they were going to be doing a new Kenshin manga arc, um, and they've done a couple of sort of interstitial manga episodes with it. Uh, Kenshin being an extremely popular shonen manga of the 90s, and uh, saw the live action remake a couple of uh, years ago. And this is going to be a new uh, manga, the, the Hokkaido arc, Hokkaido being the northernmost island in Japan. Um, and now, when we say a new Ronin Kenshin manga, Kenshin is a protagonist, and there's going to be five arcs to this manga. So this is not just, you know, oh, we're going to do couple months worth of Kenshin, like this is a whole new Kenshin storyline. This is bringing back a shonen franchise that was been dormant for a very long time in terms of the original source material, and we're going to get a whole new batch of it. Uh, so it's very interesting to see. It would, be, it would be kind of like, you know, um, Bleach comes to an end, and then 15 years later they're like, oh, we're going to do a whole nother Bleach series in manga, and then do another adaptation of it. So hopefully this will be animated as well, who knows? But really unusual to see something that, uh, again, has, has had some adaptations, had some stuff done, but to see it revived like this by the original author. So, wow, kind of interesting. Uh, moving on, uh, nearing the end of the list, kind of interesting story, a bit surprising. Uh, Daisuke, the anime streaming service, has announced it will be ending October 31st, closing down. Um, Daisuke is the streaming service uh, done by the Anime Consortium Japan, which is a collaboration between Aniplex, Sunrise, Toy Animation, TMS Entertainment, uh, NAS, Densu, Asatsu DK, 
um, and a few others, I believe. Basically, a lot of the big heavy hitters in Japan collaborated to do a an anime online streaming service that would be multilingual and be one of those things where, hey, we can just kind of put all this stuff directly onto the streaming service. And apparently, it hasn't worked out. Um, launched back in April 2013, so it's only been going for about four years now. And um, so, yeah, it's done. Now, that said, um, they have been the main ones simulcasting Dragon Ball Super, and they've said the simulcast will still be made available even after the service ends October 31st. So we don't know what that's going to actually be, but Dragon Ball Super will still be out there available somewhere, somehow. Kind of interesting. Um, so that is interesting. Uh, Daisuke Next will be ending on September 29th. Uh, the app will stop being available for download in October, and then the social networking accounts will close down in December. Um, uh, basically, those who have uh, bought into it is a couple bucks a month um, will, uh, basically, if, if you've already got a premium membership, that will continue through October 31st. Um, so even if it was going to end in, say, July or, 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 say, August or September, they're going to continue that premium membership until the end of the service, which is kind of nice. You don't, have, you don't have to pay more for those last few months of service. Unfortunate, though, that that uh, kind of, uh, that didn't kind of work out. Finally, odd little news story, just wanted to uh, point out, uh, Kore Yamazaki will be at Crunchyroll Expo this year. This is a new Crunchyroll convention that uh, will be held uh, August 25th through 27th in Santa Clara, California. Uh, Kore Yamazaki drew The Ancient Magus's Bride, which is a, as far as I know, a relatively small um, manga about a, a Celtic mage and his assistant which got an OVA adaptation, and then there's a, will be an anime coming in um, in the fall. But kind of cool that somebody, you know, that they're bringing over a manga artist uh, who, again, is getting an anime adaptation, but getting, like, the original author behind something over at an American anime convention is a pretty unusual, pretty bold move. So good for them for doing that, and um, be interesting to see if we get more of those, you know, be like, we need to get Clamp over here, and we need to get some of these you know, um, some of these creators over here to talk to them about the actual work instead of, I directed it, and whatever. So, who knows? Uh, but that's the news for the week. A lot going on, kind of surprising. I uh, hope this was helpful. Um, I will not be here next week. I'll be here in a couple weeks. I'll be on vacation the next two weeks. So, uh, we'll be having a lot more to talk about in about three weeks. See you then. Thanks for watching.